My colleague from Arizona, Mr. Crane, is recognized for five minutes for questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. And I also appreciate you bringing up the, uh, the quote from uh, Mr. Neto. I want to go through that quote really quick again, Mr. Neto. This is what you said. You know, what we have really done here is oversee a historic increase in lawful pathways to the U.S., including at our ports of entry through CBP-1 application. You most certainly have given us a historic increase, sir. And I want to go to a historic increase real quick, just an example, just a couple days ago, not a couple years ago, but a couple days ago in Arizona, where I'm from. This is Fox News on 6-4-23. Border Patrol canine sniffs out $2 million in fentanyl during traffic stop in Arizona, Fox News. Mr. Huffman, are you aware of this story? Do you remember this one? Yeah. Border Patrol K-9 helped agents sniff out $2 million worth of smuggled fentanyl during a traffic stop in Arizona last week. The seizure happened at a checkpoint along I-8 near Yuma. Yuma Sector Chief Patrol Agent Patricia McGurk Daniel stated, the narcotics totaled more than 192 pounds, enough to kill 48 million people. So I didn't say 48 people. I didn't say 48,000 people. I said 40, 48 million people. That's exactly the historic increase that you all have brought to the United States of America. Now I wanna go down to the second part of your quote where you say, and what we are really trying to do here is incentivize migrants to use safe, lawful, and orderly pathways that again, we have expanded dramatically over the last two years. I wanna focus in on one word, incentivize. That is exactly what you have done. And I know why you've done it, sir, because that's exactly what your boss did. He was doing that when he was campaigning for president. I actually got a chance to read his very quote to Secretary Mayorkas sitting in your chair like a month ago. If you guys were actually serious about securing this border and protecting Americans, that word would not be incentivized. You know what it would be, sir? It, it would be deter. I'll say it one more time, it would be deter. You guys would be trying to deter people. Now I understand, you know, my colleagues over here, they're talking about, you know, um, folks trying to come here, um, migrants, and you know, because of one of my colleagues said, he attributed our border crisis to global economic disaster, okay? We, we and I sa I've said this in this committee before, this side of the aisle, we, we, do love, we do love the fact that the United States of America is such a great country that people want to come here. As a matter of fact, we can all recognize that one of the great things about this country is that we, we do have a lot of immigrants here. But we, legal immigrants, that's what we want, sir. And because of the Biden open border policies, it is flooding people into this country and it is tying up our border patrol agents to the tune of what I, this story that I just read you. 48 million people could have died by the fentanyl that just came in in Arizona two days ago. What do you think about that, sir? Thank you for that question. I, I would note that 90% of the fentanyl that comes into the country comes through our ports of entry, not between our ports of entry. We have been uh, engaged in an all of government. Hold on a second, sir. How are you able to even calculate that when there's so many gotaways that get, come through, not through the port of entries that you guys don't even get? How could you say that? The only numbers that you can calculate are based on- Gentlemen, you yield. Got... Yeah, go ahead. I just gonna say two separate issues, yep. fentanyl. And uh, earlier we had a witness, my Orange County Sheriff that said a lot of the fentanyl precursors are now coming into the US through our own ports of entry then going south into Mexico for manufacturing. So I think it's a great, Mr. Crane, great issue, fentanyl. Love to set up another committee hearing to address this. Mr. Crane, I'm gonna yes, claim back my time. Are you saying that fentanyl is not coming through the gaps? Or is that what you're saying, sir? I'm saying, sir, that fentanyl is coming in from all parts. Yeah, that's what I'm saying too. So he's claiming that 98%, according to experts, is coming through the ports of entry. How can he possibly know that? Anybody in Border Patrol can tell you they don't have enough manpower, especially when a lot of our agents are 
busy processing people coming in through the country. They don't have enough manpower. That's why there's so many gotaways. That's so many, why there's so many people on the terror watch list that are coming through the border as well. And Mr. Crane, just to answer your question, I think he's talking, I'm not gonna put words in their mouth, but from experience, that's where most of the fentanyl is being caught right now at the ports of entry. And I've been there like you have. Caught, that's the key, caught. That's because that's where most of our people are. And there's not double, a bunch, there's not we, as, there's not the same percentage of people in the gap. And, and if that's we double, what I'm telling you. And we doubled the number of uniforms, blue uniforms that they're supposed to have entry, we would catch double the amount. But you still aren't touching the gaps where there aren't people in the open desert. That's what we're talking about. There's so many, there's, there's video after video of people that just ranchers, you know, good, good citizens that just go to the border, sit there with cameras and watch these people come in with backpacks. I live in Arizona, sir. I, you know, I know you live in California, right? So yes. this is engaging debates, the kind of thing we should discuss, but the gentleman's time has expired. I recognize